Welcome everybody. Today we're going to start talking about Doppler effect. By Jove. That sounds different. When they're coming towards you, for some reason you have a higher pitch. When they're going away from you, you have a different... I'm thinking about the sound coming from that red source here. <clears throat> if I look, if they're going towards each other, you run into those waves more often. See how fast they're hitting the yellow waves, and boom, he gets hit there, hit there, hit there. And if you're going away from each other, it's almost like you are... As the train approaches, sound waves from the whistle are crowded together in front of the approaching train. The crowded sound waves produce the relatively high pitch heard by the listener on the platform. As the train moves away, the waves are spread out producing the relatively low pitch heard by the listener. So the person we give credit to for discovering this effect, not discovering, but the person we give credit to is uh, Johann Christian Doppler. And I uh, noticed this was a long time ago. Um, from it, we've built a lot of different models about the universe. So you'll see in a second. So the idea is, is as the source, the thing that's producing the sound, is approaching you, um, that those waves get bunched up and so you're a higher frequency. And then if you're behind it, it sounds like a lower frequency because it's more stretched out. I like to just writing this down. This is the formula to calculate what the new frequency will be. This F prime represents the new frequency. F naught represents the original frequency. V here is the velocity of sound. Um, and so you're going to get uh, 343 out of that. And the idea is here is that if you have um, v naught. If you, if the motion of the is going towards each other, then your v naught is going to be positive, and if they're going to be going towards each other, um, then your source, whatever you have for that speed, you're going to put a negative in here. Um, and so we'll work through a problem. You'll see how that works in a second. So the other one is if they're going away from each other. Um, these are the signs we'll be using. So get that down, and we'll flush it out as we go through a couple problems. So the train is traveling at 60 meters per second. It has a 550 hertz train whistle. What frequency is heard by a stationary listener in front of the train? So start up by writing down your equation. My new frequency is my original frequency. Times the speed. And now I have to decide what numbers I stick here. So do this. Commit really quick and choose what you think those numbers are. All right, so it seems like you've committed to something. And so if you think about it, my source is moving, and I'm going to do a minus there. Um, one is to memorize the rule. The second way to think about it is this frequency, since it's coming at you, is going to go up. And what do I need to do the bottom of this fraction to make it a larger number? The way to make it a larger number is to have it smaller than 343 here. If I were to add it to it, this would make it a smaller than one fraction, and then my frequency would drop. So that's, that's how I remember it, but uh, I know some of you are better at memorizing things than I am. And so you're going to get a new frequency. Sweet. All right, next up. So 666. All right, cars traveling at 35, honks their horn at a jogger, running away from the car at 10. What frequency is heard? So um, let's try setting it up, and then we'll come right back. So welcome back. So this is one of the harder ones to set up. So the first idea is that you need to um, you know, put in your frequency, 343 minus 10.9, because the, the jogger is running away, which should lower it. And so I need to have the top of this fraction become a smaller number. Um, and then the car is traveling towards them. So this also has to be a minus down here. And so I get a new frequency. Um, you believe you get 835. What is the car here? Let's think about the car. The car is the observer and the source, and they're moving at the same speed, and so you hear the same frequency. Guys, you're inside the car. The horn's with you. Um, as you emit a wave, yes, it is now bunched up. But you know, so you have all these different things. But if you are the source and the observer, it's the same. Nothing changes. Um, last one. May is running at 70 per second around the track. She holds a tuning fork, and you hear 412 when she's running towards you. Ah. So I have frequency equals frequency times, well, what I have is May's running, and so she's the source. So my observer isn't moving, but she is coming 
towards me. So it's going to be a higher frequency. So I'm going to subtract her speed from it. And the key is, is the new frequency I hear is 412. And so there it is. And I'm going to get myself a frequency that I observe. Last idea around Doppler shift is since the edges of our universe are expanding, as they expand away, well, we're behind them, so what do we see? We see these waves stretched out slightly, and so what we see is we actually see a red shift. Um, very much grounded. Uh, one of the things that we see is brighter stars, which are closer, um, so you know our speeds are somewhat more relative. Um, ones that are more distant. What you do is you see all of these shifts towards the red. And since we have these shifts towards the red, it's one of the pieces of evidence we have that we have a very, very old universe. Well, thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful weekend. I lied. Supersonic. What happens when you go supersonic? Ready? Here's you seeing still. Look at all that sound emitting. Mm. Hmm. Here's you moving forward. It gets piled up. Look at behind you. It's a little bit stretched out. Hmm. If you're going the speed of sound, you emit a wave at the same time that you emit the next wave but you're catching up to all those waves you've made. So what are all those waves doing? They're all piling up. You have this huge pressure front at the front, at this peak right there at the speed of sound. What happens? You go faster than the speed of sound. Crazy stuff. But the big idea is since sound is a pressure wave, if all of those pressure waves sit together, I have a huge amount of pressure. Huge amount of pressure means I can condense fog. Have a good one.